bag does because as the temperature changes in your house, fluctuates from hot to cold, even if you got it almost steady, it's going to uh, it's going to lose some of its moisture because it's up and down, up and down. And that's why packing these this way, if they can breathe, they don't perish. They don't die. That's what they would do out in the, Barry would know, out in the, in the rain pool or in the jungle somewhere, when it dries up, it's hard, it just dries up, but it's in soil. And it's, it's packed in that mud and uh, that's just locked in. And then when the rains come again, there you go. Sprouts and grows, so we're really duplicating that in a way. So mm -hmm. then, where, what do you do then? Where do you store them? What's the most ideal place to store them then? I've got them stored in my bedroom. I've got them. No, we go ahead and grow the tuber off all winter. Now, as, as the winter comes on, and we have a lot of gray days here in Angelo, see? So we need a lot of sunlight. Now, we don't try to grow the night bloomers because they require too much, uh, too much uh, more sun than the, than the day bloomers do. Uh, and some of the day bloomers that have uh, marmot leaves require more sun because they, the chlorophyll is not the same content. So anyway, we can grow them all winter here in the glass house. Like we grow them, in a, grow them in a glass house. The houses are, uh, greenhouses are glass, or at least what I'm saying is they're clear. So we get as much light as we can. And it uh, usually takes about two months to make one of these. <coughs> and we pack it up. And uh, that year, we may not grow it for two or three years, but we pack it and put it in inventory and keep it that way so that when we do want to grow it, we've got it. And I'm talking, I've got jillions of tubers. But you can look at, let's look at another one here, for example, as samples. Uh, Here's a June Allison, a, a plant. Now look, this one was this. This is 07 also. And here's what we've got. Look, you see the little growing tip? Yeah. Teeny, teeny tiny. Yeah. You have to be real careful when you're unwrapping these that you don't snap that off. Yeah, if it no grows into the part. fabric, then cut around the fabric. Uh, sometimes if it's rare, we just packed a Zanzibar, uh, I will put something like a a plastic against this so that the, the, the growing tip and the hastate leaves, the arrowhead shapes, don't grow through, that'll go right through the fabric. And if you do that, you pull that off, pop that off, you're in big trouble. You just lost your deal. And so in that case, we do that, but we, if we know we're going to grow this within three years, we're in pretty good shape. So see, now say I, I took this out. You can see that this <coughs> thing is still kind of moist, not See, I can't get anything out of it. So what we'll do, we'll put that in there. You saw how that takes on moisture. Well, here we go. We're good for another year or two. But this thing's been stored so far three, three years. years. Yeah. June Allison, a winch hybrid. So uh, you want to put that back in there, too? Yeah, I got it. Feels like underlayment. Yeah, it's called Dacron. It. Sometimes it's, um, it's called polyester it's called batting. Called it's, yeah. it's, it's almost it's like a polyester a fabric. Thin quilt batting. Quilt, yeah. Oh, here's, a, hmm. here's another way you can pack them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can roll them up like this. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, depending on where you go, they'll call it different things. But I mean, see, they all got little growing tips on them. But it's polyester. It's waiting to grow. We're going to get on top of that. Yeah. 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 Yeah people that had lilies that all oh, they wanted them really bad they were something that they came up with and uh, they didn't know what to do and so we would float them off at over two or three years and get them smaller and smaller and smaller and then plant the plant up and make it tuber when the soil matrix like I told you form above but once they go into a vegetative state like we see and they flower and bloom can't do this they can't pack them this way they just rot and die so what we do we hold them over at the greenhouse we have a container like this. Uh, everybody can see this container here. What it is, it's a 
hospital deal, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some kind of thing. But anyway, you can go get that. And if you uh, you go ahead and take all the roots off the plant, all the roots, and what you do, you leave four or five good leaves on one. Say we want to store one of these blue clouds, and I wanted to save it. Then I would do that. You'd have this big chunk of mass here. All of these roots you'd get rid of because they foul the soil. And then you, when you get all the roots off, girls hate doing this. They don't like it when I make them do that. But we cut all these roots off, and then we lay the plant sideways and wire it down. It's wired down to the pot. And the new roots will form off the top in 80 degree or 60 degree, 70 degree water and grow into the soil. But if you leave the roots on, you'll foul the soil. If you foul the soil, you lose the plant. So at the very end of it catches on and digs in and starts growing in a little pan like this. And it'll grow through the winter, all through the winter. And then if you want to keep it for that, ne for that next year and grow it uh, for the next season, you go ahead and pull it out when spring gets here and then cut the big tuber off and then you'll have, you'll have a plant with white roots and you go ahead and plant it out again. If you want to save it for a longer period of time, you've got to take it and back down and back down by repotting it in a smaller situation until you get to where you can store it again. I've brought, uh, I've had things that, that people wanted me to do that were fully grown big and uh, we've been able to save them for them, but you know, it's a big deal to try to keep them. But when you, if you want to keep a lily over, don't just pack it in sand and say, well, I'm done, I'm going to have it next year because you're probably not going to. It's tropical material, Brachycerus especially, and uh, the next even too, especially those tropical types. So what you want to do is, is go ahead and let the, and put it in as much water as you can and let it grow. You know, you put it in a light situation. If you don't have the light to wherever your latitude is uh, and the days are too short, then put supplementary light, but you've got to keep it growing. In our greenhouses, there's always a whole bunch of plants that we ripped out from the collection and decided that, well, we're going to keep this thing because we only got, you know, three or four left. Uh, and then we'll grow it through the season. Now, when we grow it through the season and summer comes and you whack it off, you cut the tuber plum off, just cut it off and have the head plant, there's just these roots. Then we'll take and put that in a pot, and then the, and if it's if it's in the springtime, grow it off in this small pot all year, and then a farm a, a caudex over where you cut it off the layer, and it will be storable then. It takes two years though. But you can't be done. We do it all the time, really. That's how you do. Does everybody understand what we just talked? What we just said? Okay. It takes two years to go back to tuber. It takes two years at least to go back to tuber. And you need one season of full sun. And you cut the uh, the big old, you know, the whole year's previous growth off. You start with, you say, man, this is kind of mean. We're going to whack this thing <laughs> like this. Yes, yeah. But you have to. And the plant, while it's growing, says, well, I don't know what happened, but I got cut back. And so as, this, as it grows throughout the season, the next summer, it forms a layer of cork over that bottom that you've cut off and you store it. So you may have